Good morning, everyone. Our service today will begin with communion, and then we will move into the remainder of our service together. Friends of God, come to this place of sheltered, of sacred shelter. Come to this place of wonder and belonging. Come to this place of healing and renewed strength. Gladly come and share in the mystery of God's unfolding love for you and the entire world. May the grace and peace of Christ be with you all. Community of Christ, we gather as friends knowing the many strains of living and the weariness it sometimes brings. We know what it means to be dry and dispirited in the prophet's valley of dry bones. Yet we also know the replenishing power of spirited love. We know how affirmation, belief, and forgiveness can raise us to new possibilities and choice for the common good. And so again, we pray that the spirit of life moves before us and stirs within us through the eating of this bread and the drinking of wine. May spirits renew, may spirit renew us at heart and embolden us at soul. Alive and attentive to the spirit, may, we, may our lives confidently express God's desire for the healing of the nations and the restoration of Mother Earth. Amen. And break open to us Christ's life of love. And pour unto us Christ's love of life. Well, if we were gathered together, we would be now gathering in groups of 12 around the table. But I invite you now to join with me in our sacrament of communion. By your indwelling spirit, may this bread of nourishment and this wine of joy be our vigor and our vitality as we journey through this day, our common journey into wholeness and compassion. Amen. Well, my friends, bread for our journey. And our wine of arrival. And God's blessings be upon us all. We gather at a crossroad and we know not what lies ahead. We know that we will encounter betrayal, pain, and longing, loneliness, but we go willingly because we go together with Christ. So let us continue on our journey with courage, hope, and gratitude. Amen. Let us pray together. God of the journey's end, we know that any day can bring both sadness and hope. We are formed and transformed by experiencing the good in each day and courageously facing the difficulties ahead. Draw us near to each other as you draw us nearer to you, so we may share strength with those who have less and borrow more courage from those who have more. Amen. I testify to the, to the truth, Jesus said to Pilate. What is the truth? Pilate asked. I would like to share with you a poem, Teaching the Moon to Tell the Truth, by Abigail Perez with you now. Learning to tell the secrets you keep from yourself is a lesson the moon has learned in watching the tide rise in the eyes of a friend. It is an invitation for the stone in your deeps to learn to dance in the motion of the blue, green, rush, sigh, hush, and salt, and to soften itself while it beats against the jagged pebbles you swallowed when you were starving for truth. This poem 
tells about the poet's experience of watching a friend's face when she recounts a sad story. She uses the idea of swallowing stones to describe the ways we take in all kinds of information about each other because we want to know the truth about a person. Well, I know it's snowing here at my place and I'm pretty sure it's probably snowing where you are as well. But at some point, I would like you to go outside and find yourself a small jagged stone. I want you to hold it in your hand. I want you to feel its sharp edges. And as you do so, may you seek courage, the desire to tell the truth about who you are and to love that truth even when it feels difficult. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of John, chapter 18, verses 1 through 19, and then 42. It's a paraphrasing from Seasons of the Spirit that I will be reading for you this morning. The day started in silence. Jesus took the disciples to a garden he knew, a quiet place where they could sit and pray and wait for what was about to happen. Judas knew the garden too. And he came there with the soldiers, carrying lanterns and torches and weapons like they were going into battle. And Jesus spoke. Who are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. I am he, Jesus said. And the soldiers fell to the ground. Who are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. I told you, I am he. So if you are looking just for me, let my disciples go free. Peter took out a sword and went after one of the people with the soldiers. But Jesus said, put your sword away. It is time for me to drink the cup that God has given me. The soldiers took Jesus to the high priest and Peter and the disciples followed him waiting outside the gate. Someone asked Peter, are you one of Jesus' disciples? But Peter quickly answered, I am not, and drew near to the charcoal fire the police had built outside the gate. For some reason, he felt very cool. A police officer asked Peter again if he was with Jesus. If he was one of Jesus' disciples. And again he answered, I am not. Finally, a slave asked, didn't I see you in the garden with Jesus this very night? And for the third time, Peter said, no. And a rooster crowed. Meanwhile, inside the gate, the high priest asked Jesus about his teaching. And Jesus answered, I have nothing in secret. I have said nothing in secret. Why are you asking me? The police slapped Jesus for being rude to the high priest. And Jesus said, did I say something wrong? Why are you hitting me? They took Jesus to see Pilate who asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, are you the one asking this? Or did others tell you about me? Pilate said, I am not a Jew but your fellow Jews handed you over to me. What have you done wrong? And Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. So you are a king. You say I am a king, but I say that I testify to the truth and everybody who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate answered Jesus, what is truth? But Jesus did not answer him. He said all there was to say. Pilate said to the crowd, you have a custom that I can release a prisoner this time of year. Shall I release the king of the Jews? But the crowd said, no, release Barabbas, the bandit. Pilate did not let Jesus go free. Instead, he told his soldiers to whip Jesus. 
The soldiers dressed him up in a ridiculous costume, a purple robe and crown made of thorns, making fun of him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews, while they hit him in the face. Pilate went out to the crowds who cried, Crucify him. And Pilate said, Crucify him yourself. I find no case against him. The crowd, the crowd said, he has broken our law because he claims to be the son of God. Pilate was afraid. He asked Jesus, where are you from? Why will you not speak to me? Don't you know I have the power to release you or to have you killed? He brought Jesus out to the crowds and said, here is your king. But the crowd said, we have no king but the emperor, crucify him. So they crucified Jesus on a hill under a sign which read, Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews, dividing his clothing among the soldiers. Jesus looked down from the cross and saw his mother Mary and the disciples he loved. He said to them, from now on, you must be mother and son to one another. And it was so. Jesus said he was thirsty, but they gave him only sour wine. Then Jesus said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. I would like to share with you the words of Roddy Hamilton. So here we are, standing where we never thought we could at the foot of death, crush under the fickleness of humanity. The heart of heaven has stopped. All that hope, the dreams of peace, the promises of justice, and you so burned that you so burned with, snuffed out with a few nails and a cross beam. Jesus, what do we do now? What is there left to do? It is a cold place where the breath of heaven stops. It is a frightening place. It is a lonely place. This is what the world does. What it does to love and then turns its back, rubbing its hands, finished with its final enemy. Oh, Jesus, what do we do now? What is there left to do? The Savior has died, and the future can seem lost, out of grasp. Light is swamp. Oh, Jesus, what do we do now? What is there left to do? What do we do now? What do we do now? We wait beyond eternity. We hope beyond every hope we've ever had. We trust beyond belief in a God who cannot leave it there, who cannot leave it here. Let us pray together. God of deep fear and anxiety, be with us as we prepare to enter into a time of uncertainty. We know that Jesus lived and in that life there was hope. And now Jesus is gone, and it may seem as though our hope is gone too. God, we are living in a time of deep shadows of puzzlement. May we listen to those who are providing us with information. Let us support more of the people who need help. And know that the only way through the fear is together. Amen. Well, in spite of being apart, we can be together. Thank you for joining me this morning and God bless. Later today, you will receive, if you're on the email list, a copy of today's service. And at the end of the service is a, um, a link to a, a YouTube video uh, that uh, my friend Noah sent to me. It's a beautiful uh, video uh, of the Last Supper and of the miracles of Jesus.
and I really encourage you to watch him. Take care, my friends. Stay home, stay well, stay safe. Miss you. God bless.